you. So about the training material for this um, sessions, um, I don't have any uh, specific training material that I can actually offer you as a, um, a Word document or a PPT or something like that. Um, so because the reason being uh, there are a ton of materials available online uh, and there's no reason why I can bring up my own set of materials. Um, so the, my preference or my preferred link um, for the material is the MSDN. That's my first preference. Um, if you take a look at the link, I can I will distribute this link uh, uh, via email to you. Uh, if you look at this link, it's a very if you're completely new to .NET, um, these links will definitely help you in uh, getting your feet wet. And of course, uh, the online training session, whatever we're going to have, um, the topics that we're going to cover, and the examples that we're going to see, they are self-explanatory. And if you want to learn more about those topics, then uh, you can actually always go to MSDN and also refer to these um, uh, ah, the, these online resources like the C Sharp Corner. Uh, I would I want to spend a couple of minutes uh, in this material, especially the second link. This link is a, a very, very um, useful link. Those who don't know what is uh, MSDN, MSDN is a Microsoft published um, uh, developers network. Um, this contains all the uh, developer references uh, online. So it, in, a, in other words, uh, all the documentation that is required for you to use any Microsoft products. Since we are going to do a C Sharp, and the landing uh, the landing page sorry the landing page here with the link gives you the uh, uh, the information that you as a beginner uh, you can make use of it like in the first instance itself you have a link called getting started with a visual C sharp and it has how it has step by step information of how to use your uh, visual studio ide how to bring uh, adding resource to c sharp programmers and so on it's a a very detailed uh, documentation available here and that's the reason I'm not bringing up any any new documentation from my end uh, because I don't want to uh, confuse or uh, have an outdated information so the, the online portal in MSDN will always have the uh, the current uh, information available um, so this is the best place where you can refer to uh, for offline study Okay, and another thing is the C sharp corner. So once you're once you know the t specific topics that you want to uh, explore more, uh, of course, if you key in the Google, it will definitely going to give you a good set of uh, result sets. And also the uh, C sharp corner, if you can uh, um, create an account if you're not there yet, it has a lot of uh, articles uh, written by many people um, uh, who. It's topic by topic. Uh, you can have sometimes you'll have a step by step information as well. How to use a specific control? How to uh, write an exam uh, code in, uh, for example, lambda expressions or anonymous methods and so on. So you can uh, have a detailed article or step by step. Sometimes even with the source code, so on. So it's the best reference point for you to walk through the uh, reference. So ton of material is available outside. The only thing you need to know is uh, where to look and how to look. And, and if you don't remember any of these, uh, you can always go with the uh, Google or Blink and uh, search for the keyword. You will see ton of material outside. Okay, so that's the reason there is no handouts or um, uh, a separate material that I'm preparing. Uh, I will circulate the topics that we are going to cover definitely. So that will at least help you to uh, look up down the line. And we'll start with what is a .NET Framework today. So uh, what is it? So the .NET Framework got released in Feb 2002. That's the first version, which is 1.0. OK, saying that, so .NET Framework uh, is a type safe and object-oriented programming environment for developing platform independent, independent and secure applications. So all the highlighted in blue keywords are critical to understand. Uh, when we define uh, what the .NET uh, framework is all about. And type safe. 
when, when, when we talk about, we, we are going to see more uh, example-based uh, answers to this uh, to just give a quick overview. What are the tap safety means? Tap safety means um, assigning or uh, having a, a variables or memory areas specific to a given da given data type. For example, a data type like an int or a string or a date, date time, and so on. So all these are specific data types, and um, and when you declare a variable or memory location to store a given value uh, of a given type, that memory location should always refer to the same data type uh, throughout the uh, throughout throughout its life in the program. So that means the type safety, and. Uh, uh, when it cannot happen. So, example, uh, if you look at the variants um, or var in Java, in JavaScript, if you have a var keyword, uh, the only data type available in, in the JavaScript is a var, which is like a universal data type, which can take any data uh, value throughout this programming life, uh, program life cycle. So, the, there are a lot of disadvantages with that because uh, if you don't have any control, uh, and what is the value that you can assign to a given variable, then there are a lot of logical uh, errors that can result out of the program. So type safety is one of the very key strong uh, feature in .NET. Okay? And uh, the object-oriented programming environment. So the, uh, .NET is completely an object-oriented programming. Um, so what is an object-oriented programming? We will see in detail. Uh, in one of the session. Uh, don't try to miss that session. I'm going to give you a very uh, detailed code examples and it's going to be at least a two and a half hour session down the line. Um, we will be talking about object-based programming to, and also object-oriented programming and aspect-oriented programming as well in that session. So don't try to uh, miss that. That's going to be a very informative session. So .NET is completely object-oriented programming and if it is completely or not, it's uh, it's a debatable thing, but we will see more in that, uh, more of that in next session. And it's an um, say environment for developing platform-independent and secure applications. So, what does that mean by platform-independent? Uh, means the platform in this case uh, refers to the operating system where the program uh, runs. So, it's it's critical to know um, the name, how the framework is given. It's a dot. And ET net. So what it ideally refers to is the internet world and uh, dot is a period operator uh, in other words and uh, the name itself self explains uh, the need to be a platform independent. Um, the need of a platform independency comes into picture especially when the applications are heterogeneous and they run on uh, a different operating system. They need to run on different operating systems because the internet itself is a network of uh, networks and the, uh, the given machine participating in a given network can be of a different operating system and um, so the applications or the communications happening between two different computers with the two different, different platforms, that is two different operating systems, uh, need to happen and that's very critical uh, to have an application running on the internet. So for that to make it happen, um, .NET Framework uh, has become uh, a platform independent uh, programming model. Or, and how it is possible, we will see uh, how this platform independence is achieved in, the going, uh, in today's uh, um, session. And also it uh, provides a secure application. So it's going to be used for secure applications. Again, um, speak, going back to the internet world. Uh, having applications running on a heterogeneous systems, it's uh, critical that uh, the security of the applications running on a different machines is ensured. Um, saying that, so if at all, if you see a malware uh, that's running in your machine or coming down, coming down to your machine and uh, deleting all your hardware resources or memory, accessing your memory, it can happen. So you, we see this uh, viruses is a very common threat in the internet world. So any damn program come and sit in your machine and eat up your hardware resources, your or your operating crash your operating system. You can eat up your even boot sector and a lot of things. So um, writing programs in .NET uh, platform uh, has a unique features called the code access security features, which will um, which will not allow 
any program so that means that which is written in the .NET, not any other. If you write in a C, C a program and let it do anything, then not .NET is not going to save you from it. But so any program that is written in .NET uh, language uh, are that, uh, are secure uh, while they are executing in, in a given um, operating system or a given environment. Uh, so how this is achieved? Uh, what is the code access security is all about, and how it is uh, how it is uh, done? We will see uh, in detail. So all of these keywords we will see in detail. So just going to going to give you some uh, glimpse or overview of uh, what they mean all about. Okay. So that's the overview of the uh, Dotnet framework in a, in a three line statement. Okay. So Dotnet framework can be used to develop. Uh, uh, the following types of applications. So we have almost six types of application which can be created using the dot and framework. The number one is the console applications, um, which we are going to see in almost all these sessions. So uh, since we, the main focus in uh, in this training program is to learn the language, uh, we are not. I'm, I'm not interested in showing you all these different flavors in. Um, uh, to learn the language. So what we need is a console application and it's pretty, pretty much going to be straightforward. We will not see any um, uh, GUIs at all. Uh, we will run everything in, in the console application. And then um, and number two type is the GUI based applications which are uh, Windows GUI based applications and the web, uh, third one is the web applications, the fourth one is XML web services, fifth is the Windows services and the sixth is the mobile applications. Uh, so we are not going to see the uh, mobile applications uh, and also the Windows services but we will see uh, as part of the project at the end of the session we will see uh, all the four, number four up to four. A console application, uh, Windows GUI based applications, uh, we'll see uh, ASP.NET web applications and also XML web services using WCF services. Okay, so we'll see all of that. Good. And this is the version stack. Um, uh, this is again, as I said, as, as a keynote in the beginning of the training program, uh, that it's important for you to know which version got released when and uh, which of the uh, Visual Studio IDs uh, come with by default uh, version. So if you see the version 1.0 got released in uh, Feb 2002 uh, and 1.1 got released uh, one year after that in 2003 and it's available uh, by default in Visual Studio 2003, uh, Visual Studio .NET 2003 and after this uh, the naming has changed uh, they removed the .NET keyword from the Visual Studio itself. So f after that, it started calling as Visual Studio 2005, wherein uh, the 2.0 uh, version got released. And this is the version. Uh, if you see a uh, 2.0.50727.42, this is the version uh, that is more stable than uh, than any of the other versions. So 2.0 has been very successful release and uh, Till uh, 4.0, the the core fra uh, core version was not actually changed. Um, so we still refer to 2.0 libraries uh, in even the 3.0, 3.5 framework version. So the base library is, uh, is almost um, uh, frozen till the 4.0. 4.0 they have added a couple of uh, new additions. Uh, only they need to modify the uh, base libraries. Um, uh, because of the parallel uh, parallel processing or parallel task library that added up in 4.0. Okay, so this important um, and this information you can actually get it from Wikipedia. Uh, if you search for dot and framework in Wikipedia, you will see this table. So I, this is a table I extracted from Wikipedia. Okay, so um, it does no need to for you to write this down or um, memorize this, but uh, Wikipedia will have this information. And of course Visual Studio and again a default in Windows operating system. If you see this is another key thing that um, is important to remember. So the last version 3.5 3 is available in Windows 7. So Windows 7 if you see the operating system, uh, that's the latest operating system which is released one. And also at the server side we have a Windows Server 2008 R2 is the latest in the market. Uh, and they come with 3.5, not 4.0. Okay, so because it got released after 
this uh, operating system got released. Of course, Windows 8 is going to come with the default operating system, uh, default uh, framework 4.0. And of course, Visual Studio 2010 is the current uh, uh, latest version. And of course, uh, if you know, many of you might know, Visual Studio 2011 uh, developer preview version is already uh, available, uh, which is again focusing uh, in uh, integrating the Windows 8. Um, so Metal Life applications are uh, the application that you can build using uh, 2011. Uh, that's a very interesting feature. Uh, if at all you want to take a look at it, uh, it's uh, it's one of the really uh, very good features. I, I like them. I'm just waiting to explore more on 2011. Okay, so that's uh, about the background of the version stack of Dotton framework. And one important thing uh, with my experience, I have seen people do normally get overlapped or confused between the various versions. Uh, uh, like for example, uh, Visual Studio has its own version cycle. Okay, so, and .NET Framework has its own version, versioning. So Framework is uh, different from IDE. Visual Studio is just an IDE wherein you can manage the projects, uh, build the projects, uh, debug them or troubleshoot them, things like that. So it's an IDE uh, whereas a framework is a set of libraries uh, that can be available um, and the version for framework is different from the version from the Visual Studio. Similarly, there are a ton of other things like um, um, if you talk about ASPM, we see uh, it has its own version cycle. So it's it's all independent to each other. Um, so that's the key thing you need to remember. So not all are not same. So when I say 4.0, it's specific to the .NET Framework version. And we'll see most of the Framework uh, 4.0 versions uh, uh, features, uh, but not completely. And this is the version stack of